Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Laura LaRosa's filling in for Jess, and let's get in some front page news. Now, last night, like I said, the Eagles lost to the Falcons 22 21. The Eagles had the game, but they lost it in the last two, what, two minutes? Less than two minutes. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to the Falcons. Now, good morning, Morgan. Good morning. Good morning. So, is, I was going to say, where's Charlemagne? He's not there? Okay, so. Give me in a second. I know. Look, I know he's overhearing from President Biden, but hey, he's still our commander in chief. And if he speaks, I'm going to report on it. OK, so okay. with that said, President Biden says there's no place for political violence in America after there was an alleged uh, attempt or another alleged attempt rather on former President Trump's life. Now, speaking at the National HBCU Week Conference in Philadelphia, Biden said America has suffered too many times from violence against political leaders. And it does nothing but creates more problems. Let's hear those comments from President Biden. Let me just say, there is no, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, those of you who know me, many of you do, no place in political violence for political violence in America. None. Zero. Never. I've always condemned political violence. I always will in America. In America, we resolve our difference peacefully at the ballot box, not at the end of a gun. America suffered too many times the tragedy of an assassin's bullet. It solves nothing and just tears the country apart. We must do everything we can to prevent it and never give it any oxygen. So meanwhile, we are learning more about the alleged suspect in the attempted assassination and the details surrounding the event. Speaking from Palm Beach County, Florida, where the event occurred, or excuse me, the incident occurred, mm -hmm. Acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe said the suspect, Ryan Ruth, did not get off any shots, and he praised uh, former presidents, uh, the former president's detail for their swift actions. Let's hear those comments from Acting C Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe. Yesterday was an off-the-record movement off the record, and the president wasn't even really supposed to go there. It was not on his official schedule. And so we put together a security plan, and that security plan worked. We need to get out of a reactive model and get to a readiness model. There could be another geopolitical event that could put the United States into a kinetic conflict or some other, uh, some other issue that may result in additional responsibilities and protectees of the United States Secret Service. And I just want to say that the commitment of Congress to the Secret Service throughout the years has been tremendous. And we will continue to work with them and Secretary Mayorkas. Yeah, he and, uh, was, that wasn't on the schedule, but everybody said that that's what he usually does. They said when he's off Sunday, he goes to his golf course and he, he plays golf in the morning and he has lunch in the afternoon. They said that is his schedule, even though it's not on his official schedule. So people did know right. that. Right. And Mayorkas, by the way, is the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, for those who do not know. So 58-year-old Ryan Res Wesley Ruth, uh, he does face two federal charges, one count of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and one count of a pos of possession of a firearm with an obliterated serial tag. Now, whether or not those charges will stick uh, remains to be determined. Um, former FBI uh, special agent and current Palm Beach County uh, defense attorney Stuart Kaplan, he says it's possible uh, the suspect may not be charged with federal crimes because he never got off any shots and he was never actually seen pointing the gun at former President Trump. So uh, I will continue to keep you updated on those. Those That's two charges. Right. I know. Right. Um, those two charges do carry a combined maximum penalty of 20 years in prison and a, a possible fine of five hundred thousand dollars. So, again, I'll keep you posted on that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Trump, he's he's jumping in on all of this responding. He's blaming the rhetoric of President Biden and Vice President Harris for the apparent uh, second assassination attempt on him. Uh, Trump talked about the incident a day after the man was taken into custody after authorities said he attempted to target Trump while playing golf. Uh, he said Ruth is believed, Ruth believed the rhetoric of Biden and Harris and he acted on it. Now Trump noted previous comments from Biden and Harris that described Trump to be a threat to democracy and he called on Democrats to watch what they say leading up to November's election. Uh, quoting, they use highly inflammatory language. I can use it too. Far better than they can, but I don't. Far yeah. better, much better. Better than anybody you've ever seen. But, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, she actually uh, stepped in and uh, spoke uh, through the White House saying that she is deeply disturbed uh, by the possible um, assassination attempt of former President Trump and that she condemns political violence. So we will continue to watch this situation for you. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know what's going on as details arise. Yeah, that rhetoric is the rhetoric that he actually spits. That All that is done because of the things that he said. But let me ask you a question. Uh, what is the national HBCU conference? I've, I've never heard of that. And, and what happens at that conference? I'm just curious. So uh, the national HBCU HBCU Week Conference. Um, I was going to say it's where you know the the, the leaders they gather in, and um, whether it be HBCU leaders, uh, presidents from uh, various universities, they uh, come in and converge, and they also meet with uh, the administration on how to you know all the the seven billion dollars that they got. Yep. Yeah. They yeah. Figure out where all of that stuff kind of gotcha. goes and more. Okay. So I'm, I believe they had some of that um, last year. I went. I attended. Um, an event at the White House for that last year. And I also sat on a call yesterday. I have to go through that call. But yeah, um, I believe those efforts will continue and I will continue to talk to you guys about that as well. All right. Thank you, Morgan. We'll see you next hour. Sure. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. In the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now let's get in some front page news. Lauren LaRose is filling in for Jess. Some quick football scores if you're just waking up. If you're an Eagles fan, well, you lost. That's right. The Falcons beat the Eagles 22-21. to And we got to congratulate Aja Wilson. Uh, she scored 1,000 points in a season. The first WNBA player to do that. So congratulations to her. Now where are we starting off with, Morgan? Listen, there is drama within the Republican Party right now after far right activist Laura Loomer, excuse me, posted racist comments on social media saying that the White House will smell like curry Jeez. if Kamala Harris wins. Now, during an interview with Meet the Press, Republican VP nominee J.D. Vance, he said he did not like the comments, but he further made comments of his own. Let's hear those comments from J.D. Vance. I think what Laura said about Kamala Harris is not what we should be focused on. We should be focused on the policy and on the issues. And look, so yeah, do I agree with what Laura Loomer said about Kamala Harris? No, I don't. I also don't think that this is actually an issue of national import. Is Laura Loomer running for president? No. Kamala Harris is running for president. And whether you're eating curry at your, chick at your dinner table or fried chicken, things have gotten more expensive thanks to her policies. Let's talk about the person running for president of Sen the United States, not a social media personality who supports Donald Trump. Senator, Excuse me, fried chicken? Oh, OK. That is crazy. Like the racism right. is just so just just so blatant, just so in your face. Right. You're trying to clean it up and you're making more of a mess. Um, so I think it's important also to note that <clears throat> my voice is leaving me. She's I think it's important to also note that J.D. Vance is married to an Indian American woman, Usha Vance, whose parents migrated from uh, India to the U.S. He also said uh, prior to those comments that he makes a mean chicken curry. But I doubt that because it's supposed to be curry chicken. Um, not going to get too much into that, but <laughs> some Republicans are condemning Donald Trump's association with uh, Laura Loomer. Um, so they're fighting back against uh, those comments that she made. And those uh, that list in actually includes senators Tom Tillis and Lindsey Graham and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Imagine MTG entering the chat, um, calling someone racist. But that's exactly what she did. She said uh, Laura Loomer's uh, comments were uh, rhetoric in a hateful tone. And uh, she called her problematic uh, someone who and someone who doesn't represent MAGA as a whole. So there seems to be some uh, trouble within the uh, paradise of the GOP party. And what's wrong with curry chicken? I love curry chicken. They never He's want no damn curry chicken. Season, right? I ain't eating no curry chicken from that man. Mm. Oh, no, not him. But, you oh. know, if Kamala's making it, I might pull up for sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, switching gears, uh, let's uh, say we have less than 50 days until the 2024 presidential election. Um, so I'll, for one, I hope you are re registered to vote. Secondly, the chief of the United States Postal Service says he's fully committed to ensuring the timely delivery of ballots in this year's election. U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy responded on Monday to concerns raised last week about three dozen election officials from the National Association of State Election Directors. The group questioned the USPS's ability to deliver millions of ballots, citing concerns about processing facility operations and frontline training deficiencies. 
Now, DeJoy says he plans to hold a call with state officials to speak to their concerns. The USPS is currently delivering mail in just over two and a half days, but is urging voters to mail their ballots at least one week before their state's deadline. And if you need that, uh, vote.gov is a great reference on um, just voting reference if you need uh, resources in regards to, you know, ballots and how to access them state by state, uh, Mm vote.gov. So, um, yeah, um, in other news, uh, the murder trial of three former Memphis police officers who are accused in the beating death of Tyree Nichols entered its second week yesterday. A Shelby County judge on Friday agreed to allow response to resistance forms filled out by the officers to be introduced as evidence after an attempt by defense attorneys to have them suppressed. Now, former Memphis police officers Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, and Justin Smith are on trial for the beating death of Nichols during a traffic stop back in 2023. Former officers Desmond Mills and Emmett Martin are expected to testify in the case after they have already accepted plea deals. Now, didn't one of the officers say he wasn't a threat when he was snatched from the car? Yes, he did. Mm. Yes, he did. So, yeah, I, yeah, this is this is and, and trust me, all of that will probably surface within this um, this trial. And uh, in my last story, sports related news, U.S. gymnast Jordan Childs, she's appealing the decision that left her stripped of a bronze medal in the Paris Olympics. Now, Childs lost out on bronze in the women's gymnastics floor routine when Romanian team challenged the decision to uh, to revise her final score. Now, the Court of Arbitration for Sport sided with the Romanians, giving them uh, the gymnast medal. Child's attorney said on Monday that everything about the court's decision was unfair and that the court refused to consider video evidence that the initial revision was requested in time. So continue the fight, Jordan Childs. We see you, girl. And uh, yeah, bring that bronze back home. All right. Well, that was That's front page front- news. Yes, that is your front page news. Follow me on socials at Morgan Media. And for more news coverage, make sure you're following the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Thank hey, y'all. Thank you, Morgan. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.